I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O. We've had a number of uh, Muslims from Long Island, where I live, who have gone overseas fighting with Al-Qaeda, and you find out they had been in mosques, and they had uh, spoken very radically, but nobody in those mosques ever told the police. Peter King is 100% right, and it's time to take the gloves off with the Muslims in America. Stop already. What do you want, your, your daughter's nursery school to blow up? And then tell me about, oh, don't be racist. Living in an open society, it's not the American way. Don't abandon the values underlying an open society. Don't give in to anti-Muslim impulse. You want your daughter's nursery to go up in flames? They're, they're mocking us. They're laughing at us. They know what schmucks we are. These people are laughing at you behind closed doors. Behind closed robes, they're laughing at you. They're using your laws, your liberal rules, to kill you. That's my Christmas me message. And I'm not Scrooge. This is not Scrooge McDuck. This is Michael Savage. You idiots, you. And no matter what you may think of me right now, mark it down. December 28th, 2015, everything I have just said to you will happen, whether you want it to or not, in a very short period of time. There will be a suspension of this fear to offend Muslims. How many of them have come forward to help us? Can you count them on one hand? Don't tell me they've helped in investigations. I'm not Hillary Clinton. Because when they finally found out that this bum in the San Bernardino Mosque, this holy piece of garbage, was involved, he said, oh, no, no, we weren't talking about jihad. We were talking about Ramadan menus, you hear? He's spitting in the face of the FBI. He's laughing at us. Because they know how to work the system. The liberals taught them good. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. You know, we're talking about fighting for our survival, which is what we're doing. Most Americans who have a brain say that the vermin in ISIS are winning. The radical Muslims... The radical Muslims are winning. That's because Obama has dragged his hands or feet or whatever you want to call it. Has not dropped weapons to those who are fighting them. Won't even give Jordan the heavy weapons it needs. If you can believe this and he's getting away with it, it's beyond belief. Gets to go to Hawaii, joke around with the Marines, hangs around amongst them as the true enemy within, uses them as cover for being the patriotic commander-in-chief, and no one dares say the king has no clothes. Oh, well, in this case, this king does have clothes. Yeah, this king has clothes, all right. It's not that this king has no clothes. This king is wearing a robe, Jackson. This king's wearing a robe. Of course the terrorists are winning. How could that even possible? How did we defeat Hitler in three or four years? How is that possible? Fought a war on two fronts. Germany, Japan. We gave it our all and we won our antecedents. They won because we had a war leader, a liberal, but a war leader, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Yeah, I know. He locked up the Japanese, blah, blah, blah. I get it. Well, look into that a little more deeply. You'll find out that he did it for a reason. You find it wasn't all based on fear and, and, and racism and resentment. There was a reason for it. But you don't know, by the way, in World War II, because it's left out of the uh, PC history books, is that the Italians were also put under a microscope, and the Germans, in case you don't know it. In fact, here's a story you didn't hear about when you were studying this in college about the Japanese internment. And by the way, the uh, uh, the Italians and Germans who were uh, uh, treated unfairly by the evil U.S. here in America during World War II in order to win that war were never given compensation the way the Japanese were, incidentally. They didn't have as good a lobby. And number two, they didn't bellyache about it day and night. Joe DiMaggio's father, remember the great baseball player, you may remember his name, Joe DiMaggio, he married Marilyn Monroe. Joe DiMaggio had a father who was a crab fisherman, 
or Fisherman's Wharf in San Francisco. Do you know that in World War II, his fishing boat was seized by the U.S. government? Why? Because he was Italian. You don't know any of this. See, I happen to be a little knowledgeable about these things. What I'm getting at is, if you're going to listen to the liberals, we're all going to die, one at a time. They're going to kill us by a thousand strokes. I love this article by George Soros, like he's a legitimate human being. The most illegitimate man in the history of the planet, in my opinion, says hysterical anti-Muslim reaction, not good. Here is a... V this bum made billions of dollars by gambling against sovereign currencies and destroying the currency, almost breaking the English pound. Then he almost broke the Malaysian currency, set off a wave of anti-Semitism like you've never, ever seen. And this... SOB who put Obama in office has the nerve to tell us not to surrender to the hysterical anti-Muslim reaction because it puts open societies at risk. Oh, really? And what does he love open societies for? Why is he behind flooding Europe with Syrian refugees? Why did he, why was he the man, the money man behind the big new Brzezinski's plan to take down Libyan dictator Muammar Gaddafi and destroy Europe? By flooding Europe with Libyans and Africans. Why? Why do these people want the borders of Europe erased? And I love how they couch it. Abandoning the values and principles underlying open societies and giving in to an anti-Muslim impulse dictated by fear certainly is not the answer. Though it may be difficult to resist the temptation, he writes. Then listen to what else this piece of garbage writes. You're not going to believe this. This is George Soros. I experienced this personally when I watched the last Republican presidential debate, meaning the hate. He says, I could stop myself only by remembering that it must be irrational to follow the wishes of your enemies. So he's now comparing Republican candidates, any one of whom, a, a toenail clipping of any of those Republicans is superior to this rat. A toenail clipping from the worst Republican candidate is superior to George Soros' entire being. Toe dust. Toe dust that's cleaned out with a finger at night by any Republican candidate is superior to George Soros' human humanity because there is no humanity there. This is a pure, unadulterated, this is the face of evil. She's telling us don't be anti-Muslim, don't get hysterical. No, don't get hysterical. Bring more of them in. And that is why as 2016 gets underway, says George Soros, we must reaffirm our commitment to the principles of open society and resist the siren song of the likes of Donald Trump and Ted Cruz, however hard that may be. Okay, this is what you call, I would call it liberal insanity, but that's really not what this is. The reason George Soros likes open societies is financial. That's number one. It's all you got to know. It's all about the money, period. That's number one. But there's number two, three, four, and five, which you can fill in yourself. So he's now, he has more hatred for Donald Trump and Ted Cruz than the head of ISIS. This sterling example of humanity, the so-called Holocaust survivor, by the way, I'll get into that in a minute. This is something, you don't get me started on this one. I'll never, ever in my life accept how liberal Jews become so psychotically, psychotically in this direction, or they move in this direction. I'll never understand this. Here is a man who allegedly fled the Nazis after World War II and was rescued by this country of ours and turns on the country along the lines of many, many others who kissed the ground when they got here and spit on it the minute they were strong enough to do so. Madeleine Albright. I, look, I can go down those, and don't tell me I'm wrong because I know when I'm right, which is about 99% of the time. So he has more hatred for Donald Trump than he does for the head of ISIS. That's what this piece of garbage has the nerve to spend his time writing an essay on. This genius, this uh, money trader in the temple. Jesus wrote about George Soros. Jesus himself wrote about George Soros. J Jesus said, beware, be beware the money changer in the temple. George Soros is the money temper, the changer in the back of the temple of our life. But let's put this thing aside. He, By the way, the reason I'm going on about him is because he just wrote this big essay in the Liberal Guardian. The hedge fund legend. He's not a hedge fund legend. You want to call him a hedge fund legend to legitimize him? He owns the damn newspapers. That's why he's called a hedge fund legend. You know, you can put a clean suit and a clean shirt and a clean tie on a pig. It'll still be a pig in a, in a, in a sty. 
you don't know the contempt I have for people who hate my country. You have no idea. But don't tell me to temper my, ver my words when I'm talking about a, a creature like him. He's telling us not to be hysterical. Well, let's put him aside. Cleric denies ties to San Bernardino killers as phone records surface. This was quite a telling story. Now, let's change the word cleric to um, Muslim. They call them imams. I don't like the word imam. I don't like the word Muslim imam. I, I have another word for it, but we'll call him imam. The Muslim acting as a spokesman for the San Bernardino Mosque where terrorist Sawin Rizwan Freak worshipped claims he barely knew Freak and didn't know his terrorist wife at all. But phone records and other evidence uncovered by federal investigators cast out in the story. The FBI has questioned the cleric. How'd they change him to cleric? Cleric sounds good. That's like a like the cleric, you know, like Christian cleric. He's not a cleric. Roshan Zamir Abbasi about his phone communications with Freak, including a flurry of at least 38 messages over a two-week span in June, coinciding with the deadly Muslim terrorist attack in two, on two military sites in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Oh, this is a different one. I get it. Abbasi, a Pakistani, insists he had nothing to do with the shooting at a San Bernardino County government building five miles from the mosque. While he confirms the text messages with Freak, he claims they were merely discussing food donations for his American mosque. Abbasi maintained at a press conference that he didn't know Freak any better than he knew the reporters in the room. But members of the mosque say Freak was a fixture there. The Freak had been coming to pray and study three times a week for two years. In fact, he memorized the lovely Koran there. Go read the Koran sometime. Go memorize it. He was memorizing the whole Koran. Go read the whole Koran. Don't read the sanitized version of it. Read the whole thing. And read the parts that they underline. They underline certain parts of it about kill the infidel, stone adulteresses to death, cut the hands off thieves, kill Jews, kill Christians. See the underlying part. Don't give me the cliff version of the, of the, uh, uh, of, of the, uh, whatever it's called, the Koran. Don't give me the Cliff Notes version put out by the Associated Press. Show me the underlying version from the mosque. Then he says he never saw Freak's wife, Tashfin Malik. Malik joined her husband in shooting 35 of his government co-workers at a Christmas party. No one knows anything about his wife, said Assistant Iman Mahmoud Navdi. She never came to prayer. <laughs> oh, we have them going. Oh, don't we have them, Ahmed? Look. <laughs> we have the idiots going. Look, the FBI running away from us. <laughs> no, we don't know her. We never saw her. No. Never knows about his wife. No, no, no. She never came to prayer. But longtime mosque member Gasser Shatada, who claims to have prayed shoulder to shoulder with Freak, said Dar al Ulum prepared a chicken and rice dinner to celebrate the couple's wedding last year. Reportedly, hundreds of congregants in the mosque attended the reception, including the mosque leadership. Ask if the freak was radicalized at the mosque. Imam Abbasi snapped. Never. He said the mosque teaches only peace. Insisting no one is even an extremist idea. No, nobody here. In Islam, he said, we are against innocent killing. We are against innocent killing. <laughs> they buy that. <laughs> they believe us. You see, in America, they have freedom of religion. <laughs> it's a Trojan horse. Read your Greek. Abdul, read your Greek. <laughs> Abbasi recently posted a message on Facebook condemning the United States and other Western nations for their Mideast policies, arguing they are equally guilty of violence to achieve political and religious goals. By the way, it's the same line that CARE took shortly after the massacre in San Bernardino. CARE is the biggest uh, group of actors on the stage, in my opinion. If I was running the country, you're joking. Me? Okay. And fill in the blank. His mosque's webpage features a video claiming that the San Bernardino shooting was carried out by the U.S. government in a false flag conspiracy. You hear this? And that Freak and Malik were patsies assassinated by government-sponsored perpetrators. Well, I could go on and on, but I don't want to get you nauseous. It's still early in the day. 
And you know why it's early in the day? Because we're still a naive 